Almost 30 years ago, a Dauphin County man was found murdered in his car. Did drugs play a role in his violent death, or was it revenge? Now, to this day, police are searching for his killer. Allie Lanyon investigates this mid-state mystery. I think about him all the time. You know, that it was just very unfair. This Dauphin County woman is talking about her friend, Robert Pottiger, who was shot to death 30 years ago. A very good-hearted person, very generous. Um, everyone loved him. Heads would turn when Bob walked into a room. It was December of 1985. Bob, as friends knew him, was 49 years old, working at a used furniture store in Steelton, and according to police, dealing marijuana. A newspaper delivery man discovered his body early on a Sunday morning, hanging out of his car parked next to a garage he rented along Route 39. He had been shot several times at close range. He was actually pretty much outside the driver's side door. His feet were still inside the car. Uh, I was very indicative of the fact that he was trying to escape out of the car as he was being shot at. Police believe whoever killed Bob was inside the car when they shot him. The keys were still in the ignition, both doors found open. And what's more, police say they found DNA inside that vehicle that could belong to the killer. We do have some foreign DNA uh, that didn't belong to, to the victim. We don't know if that's necessarily DNA of our, of our murderer, but it's definitely something that has to be looked into and pursued. In the hours before his death, police say Bob had been trying to collect money from people who owed him for drugs. They say he seemed desperate. Possibly he owed somebody a large amount of cash that night. And maybe that's the person he met and maybe didn't have enough money to pay up at that point. And, he ended up paying with his life. But police also have another theory. A few years before his murder, Bob was caught passing counterfeit money on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. He avoided jail time by becoming a government witness in a federal trial. He decided that he would work with the federal government, uh, become an informant, and uh, try to help bust up that counterfeit ring. He did that, and um, you know that's possibly one of our theories as to what happened. Maybe that. Somebody he turned an informant on or turned in, maybe came back to get revenge. Police say people were scared to cooperate with them back in 1985, afraid to admit their own illegal drug activity. They say today they have no interest in prosecuting anyone except Bob's killer. The players in this incident are obviously getting older, or possibly even dead at this point. So that window of opportunity is closing a little bit more each day. I think all of us have sort of given up. It's been 30 years. You know, maybe those perpetrators either are even dead. It seems that they got away with it, you know, which is really, really wrong. This woman says her you memories know, of Bob said. still invoke great sadness. I understand that people are going to say, oh, well, who cares about a drug dealer? You know, but Bob was much more than that. You know, he was a friend, uh, he was a good son to his parents, justice, one word, justice. Allie Lanyon, ABC 27.